Now let's listen to the approach that Stuart Albertson would take to fight for your inheritance. Hi, this is Stuart Albertson, and uh, we've got an issue here where Lupe wants some real property, Miguel wants some real property. They can't agree on that, with Miguel being the trustee. He's the one that owes all the duty to the other three trust beneficiaries. And then you've got Carlos and Damien, who are just happy to be cashed out. They don't want to be part of this intrafamily fight. They want their money. They want to move on. So we represent Lupe in this scenario. What are the options that will best meet Lupe's needs? Let's look at our options again. Option one is to file a petition for instructions. And in that petition for instructions, ask the court to order Miguel to distribute the house, the home, worth $250,000 to Lupe. This is a good option for Lupe. Lupe can file this. She has nothing to lose as a trust beneficiary. She can come forward and say, I'd like to get this house. We have an appraisal. We've attached an appraisal to the petition for instructions. We'll even give a little bit above fair market value. We would like this house as part of my distribution, an in-kind distribution. And the only reason McGill's not making this distribution is because he wants the trust asset for himself. The problem for Miguel is he's the trustee. And if you'll remember under probate code section 16003, where there are two or more beneficiaries of a trust, the trustee must treat everybody impartially. So Miguel really can't fight for himself here as a trust beneficiary because he has to treat everybody equally. So there's a chance that Lupe's petition for instructions may be successful with the probate court in getting the probate court to order an in-kind distribution of her share of the trust to her through the, the family home. What about a petition for an accounting? That was our second option, where Miguel is going to have to file a petition for accounting. This is Lupe making Miguel work. Okay, Miguel, she's saying, you don't want to distribute the trust asset to me. You don't want to make an in-kind distribution to me. I want to know what you've done as a trustee to see exactly what it is that I can look at from your management to see if there's anything I can point out to build some leverage so that I can make a deal with you ultimately to get the house. The problem with this option is it takes time to get the accounting. It also is going to cost money trust money for Miguel to create the accounting. And then Lupe is going to have to oppose the accounting if she has any problems with it. And the other two beneficiaries that just want to be cashed out now, they're getting agitated in the meantime. What about trustee removal? Again, this takes time. You've got Carlos and Damien that simply just want their money. They don't want to be part of a protracted fight. And so asking to remove Miguel, while he has breached his duties as trustee the minute he started favoring his own interests over those of Lupe because she's a beneficiary, uh, the petition for removal, it's something you would want to consider if you were going to go all the way in this case. And in that ma if that was to happen, you would want to ask for the accounting as well. So let's talk about the petition for damages. And that would be damages against Miguel. Well, the question is, what damages? So you're, again, this is going to take some time. You're going to want to file a petition to remove Miguel. You're going to want to file a petition for an accounting. And then you're going to do extended discovery to determine what damages Miguel caused to the trust, if any. So we don't even know at this point if Miguel's caused damages, other than the fact that he wants the family home, which does breach his uh, duty to treat all the trust beneficiaries impartially. What about a petition to sell the real property? This may be the second best option. Remember the first best option so far has been for Lupe to file a petition for instructions with the probate court asking it to direct Miguel to make the distribution of the family home to her in an in-kind distribution. Here the petition to sell the real estate is another petition for instructions with the probate court. And here Lupe is saying, well, listen, if you're not going to distribute the family home to me, I offered to take the rental property, but you don't want to give me the rental property because of the long-term leases that are associated with that property. So I'm just going to ask the court to order you to sell everything and then make all the distributions to the trust beneficiaries. More than likely, Carlos and Damien, they're going to like this option best because they simply just want a distribution. Lupe likes this as a second best option because it forces uh, Miguel's hand in selling the assets. He ultimately wants to keep the family home too. So maybe it brings him to the negotiation table and we can figure out how the rental property can go to Lupe, the home can go to Miguel, 
or maybe they uh, switch that up and the prop rental property goes to Miguel and the home to Lupe, but it gives options from a negotiation standpoint. So ultimately, in closing, number one, petition for instructions, that's gonna be quick. It probably won't bother Carlos and Damien too much to wait uh, for six to eight weeks for a court to hopefully instruct the trustee to act. If the trustee still refuses to act, ask the court to order the trustee to sell all the assets and make a distribution. That's likely the second best option. The, the accounting, the petition for accounting, petition for removal, and petition for damages, while those may be good options if we're gonna go all the way into litigation, protracted litigation, if you don't wanna cause a fight that's gonna cost a lot of money and time, I would suggest not doing those unless you absolutely have to.